can start, he can have his hand cut if he wants. Yeah, yeah, Good morning. Thank you for joining us for the 2020 Federal Duck Stamp Art Contest. As you know, this has been a very crazy year and we've had to be very flexible, as well as learn to use a lot of technology just to do our jobs. Fortunately for you all, you don't have to depend on my technological skills. As usual, we have our great TNV, DV, uh, television from Nashville, Tennessee, who are bringing us this live stream. Thank you, Nick and Chris. For those of you who are not familiar with the Duck Stamp program and have never been to a Duck Stamp contest, we have included a lot of information our, on our website. On our website, you will find links to the tentative schedule. Remember, this is only tentative. We will start each morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We do not know when we will finish. In a few minutes, we will introduce the judges and we will get the contest underway. But first, I would like to share a moment of reflection while we think about what it is that we're doing here. Why is this so important? 
For me, it's the out of doors. Thank you. Every year it takes a lot of work to put on the federal duck stamp contest and associated events. This year, obviously, we're not having any associated events. However, even doing it virtually, it's taken a lot of help. I really would like to thank several people who have really made this possible this year for me. Jennifer Chin, Alan Procy, Daryl McRae. For those of you who don't know Daryl, he is our mailroom specialist. He has handled each and every piece of your art. So has Jennifer Chin. We have two advisors with us this year, Kathy Fleming, who is the chief of our monitoring and data management branch, who will consult with the judges on any waterfowl biology questions. Mark Newcastle is our chief of the branch of printing and publishing, and he will answer any of the judges' questions relating to stamp design. Thank you, Mark and Kathy. Naeem and the rest of the crew here in our IT division have been helpful as well. Stacy Sanchez, Kerry Duncan, and Karina Valesquez Mondragon, and Jennifer Chin are our official scorekeepers and art handlers. Our communications and media team include Valerie Fellows, Brima Battle, Kate Johnson, and Vanessa Kaufman. And last, but definitely not least, thank you, the artists because without you, we would not have a contest. We really appreciate all of your time and talent and the love that you've put into the program and your entry. Because the contest is about the artists and the celebration of our conservation success, we invited the artists and others to send in videos and greetings. You will see several people you may recognize, as well as some new faces, over the next two days. I'd like now to introduce my assistant director of Migratory Birds, Mr. Jerome Ford, to say a few words. Jerome? Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Suzanne. Uh, I want to get off script here just a little bit. You heard Suzanne go through a long list of people, and she was saying thank you to, I want to say thank you to Suzanne. Suzanne is the chief of the Duck Stamp Office. And for many years, she did this all by herself. And I, when I say by herself, I mean one person. She was a one-person shop. Uh, so Suzanne, thank you definitely for your dedication, your leadership in getting us to this point, and definitely for recruiting the folks that you mentioned here today. So thank you, Suzanne. Appreciate that. Uh, definitely want to say thank you uh, to all of you for joining in today, for tuning in. Uh, as Suzanne mentioned, this is a little different than we normally uh, do our duck stamp contest, right? We're doing it virtually for the very first time, so if there are some hiccups along the way, we want to apologize now. Uh, but I think we're going to have a very successful contest here over the next couple of days. And over the next couple of days, you know, we'll be looking at, the judges will be looking at artwork uh, for the 88th Federal Migratory Bird Hunting and Conservation Stamp uh, for the 2021-2022 uh, Federal Duck Stamp Contest, which will be unveiled June of uh, next year. Uh, so this job that they have, I, I talked with the judges earlier, it's a very arduous task. I would not want to be sitting in those chairs. That's not to scare you and have them leave right now, uh, but it's very difficult because all the artwork is truly fine pieces of art, and I think they're all the winners in their own special way. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll be giving thanks to Mr. Eddie Leroy, who uh, was the winner from last year who had the uh, black bellet whistling ducks. If you haven't seen that piece of artwork, Please look that up. That was an outstanding piece. Uh, Eddie comes uh, to us from the great state of Alabama, and we'll have him here tomorrow and honor him and, and his fine work. Now, the uh, Duck Stamp Program is one of the service's most successful conservation uh, pieces of work, and I always tell people it's the longest running, oldest, most successful, and I challenge everybody every year. If that's not true, somebody got to bring me some information so I can stop saying that. So I'm going to say it until somebody... Uh, bring me something that says differently, but it's been around a very long time and it is very successful and it continues to grow. Uh, so we're very proud of that in, in the Fish and Wildlife Service. 
Now, we talk about the duck stamp contest. It's about partnerships. It's about conservation, definitely. But it's about partnerships. Uh, we do very little within the Fish and Wildlife Service and in the Migratory Bird Program uh, all by ourselves. The country is too vast and, and, and too large for us to kind of think about. We have all the answers. So we rely on a tremendous uh, that from uh, assistance from partners to kind of help us do that conservation piece that we have to do across the nation. So our partners come to us in many different shapes and sizes, as you can imagine, with a, a bunch of different reasons why they're there. But I think that true underlying reason is always about conservation. Now, the duck stamp program, you know, began with people who was concerned about droughts and, and the lack of water out, out in wetlands. And they were simple people, just like you, just like me, and realized that if something wasn't done, you know, that ducks and geese and swans would not have a place to go or a place to carry on their life's functions. Uh, so thus was born the federal duck stamp. Uh, and they also knew that they could depend on wetlands to help buffer their communities, whether that was from, from flooding or recharging aquifers or filtering, filtering the pollutants from their water that we all rely on, uh, whether we're drinking or we're taking a bath or we're washing our cars or whatever the case may be, uh, wetlands serve as a filter to kind of help us do the things that we need to do there. Uh, so communities can have an economic advantage uh, from their local wetlands uh, as well, whether it's for hunting, fishing, photography, uh, bird watching, you know, it's all about conservation. And people get that enjoyment oftentimes just by going out and, and listening to the sounds in the marsh or the natural wetlands, uh, those very wild places that we work really hard to, uh, to conserve. And you heard me talk about partnerships and how it takes a variety of people to kind of help us do that. Our state partners are integral to what we're trying to do out there as we see we're lockstep with state uh, wildlife organizations to do this. As I mentioned, we cannot do it by ourselves. So uh, states provide great op educational opportunities out there and programs, uh, whether it's for hunting and fishing or, or otherwise. So thank you to our state partners uh, for being on the ride with us and trying to do uh, uh, wildlife conservation. Uh, we have non-government organizations who also contribute uh, to what we're trying to do. Uh, they can help us reach some of those supporters uh, that we normally uh, wouldn't see. That's not necessarily uh, ingrained into the wildlife aspect. So we do rely on those non-government partners to do that and to increase uh, our reach out to, for the conservation effort that, again, that we do each and every day. Now, waterfowl hunters, you probably already know this, maybe you don't, purchase approximately one million stamps every year. Now, if you remember, this year's stamp had to include a hunting component uh, as we pay homage to our uh, hunters. Uh, over all these years in buying the, the federal duck stamp. And that's a lot of stamps, one million stamps per year. Uh, a lot of revenue come in from that, so thank you, hunters, for what you have done over the years and uh, what you will continue to do, uh, I'm sure. We also have a loyal f uh, following of stamp and art collectors. You know, that's what we're talking about today is the art pieces. Uh, so you provide a whole different avenue uh, for conservation. Uh, we also look at uh, national Wildlife Refuges, people who visit National Wildlife Refuges, the duck stamp serve as an entrance pass. So it is varied in, in what it, um, and what the duck stamp can do out there, whether you're a, you're a hunter or whether you're someone that's just interested in conservation or you're trying to find uh, entry into a National Wildlife Refuge. Now, I purchase three or four stamps uh, a year, and I don't duck hunt, but I do that under uh, the rubric and, and of conservation. I love giving those stamps, and it's so funny. I'll, I'll buy one on the first, buy a couple on the first day of sale, and Suzanne will find me somewhere down the line and ask me if I bought my stamp, and I'll buy another one. <laughs> I, either I forgot, or I, I think it's just a good thing to do. So thank you, Suzanne, for, for pinging me every year to have me buy more than, than one stamp. I really appreciate that. So those of you who are interested in conservation and contributing in some way, you don't have to necessarily be that avid outdoors person. You can buy the stamp online, or you can buy it at some of your post offices or some other consignment. Uh, to give back in the way of conservation, so we, we encourage you to do that. Now, although we can't be here in person uh, today, I, I do want to say this is about the artists and, and what you do. That this is your day today, so we can kind of pick that one piece that's going to be, is going to serve as next year's stamp. Uh, glad I'm not a judge. You know, I look at the judges here, and again, I chatted with them, and I, man, I hate it's them, and I'm glad it's not me uh, to try to whittle 140 something odd pieces of artwork. Uh, down to just one, but that's why we have this team and they're going to work as a unit and as a team and they're going to definitely come up with that one piece uh, that will serve on the stamp for next year. Uh, so I look forward to meeting whomever that winner may be. We will be announcing that person uh, sometime late to tomorrow. Uh, before I close, I would like to say uh, Director Skip Wiss, who is the director of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, is unable to be with us today. Uh, she's out and about um, on our National Wildlife Refuges. 
uh, we had to schedule uh, this program for today and it overlapped with some of her previous scheduled travel. Uh, so we do um, uh, want to say she, she wanted to be here uh, because she supports this program. I think one of her priorities is trying to figure out ways we can increase the sale and the revenue from duck stamp sales and that she's given that challenge to me so I continue to work with, with Suzanne and, and her office in trying to find ways to do that. Uh, but the director is out on at, at urban uh, refuges uh, today. Uh, there's over 100 National Wildlife Refuges that's dubbed as Urban Refuge. Uh, those are open to the public and they're, uh, they're about 25 miles from an urban community with a population of more than 250,000 individuals. So if you're in a metropolis somewhere and you want to go to a National Wildlife Refuge, uh, check out the refuge site or the migratory bird site so you can find an urban refuge because it is pretty close. 25 miles is not that far. You can go out and have that wild door experience. So we encourage you definitely to do that. All right, so I'm about done here, but since the director could not be with us, she did uh, do a pre-tape video, and we'd like to play that at this time. Thank you very much for joining us today. Welcome. I'm Aurelia Skipwith, director of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I am excited to welcome you to the 2020 Federal Duck Stamp Contest. It might look a little different this year, but the outcome remains the same to select our winning artists for the upcoming duck stamp. I would like to thank everyone for their support of the duck stamp program. I would also like to thank the millions of waterfowl hunters who have supported the duck stamp program since its inception. And to acknowledge the contributions that hunters have made as some of the nation's most enduring wildlife conservationists, the duck stamp contest has a permanent theme of celebrating our waterfowl hunting heritage and it will be mandatory that each entry include an appropriate waterfowl hunting scene and or accessory. Since it was first established in 1934, duck stamp cells have raised more than $1 billion that have been used to conserve over 6 million acres of habitat for birds and other wildlife species. Not to mention, provide countless opportunities for hunting and other recreational opportunities on our public lands. That's why it's been called one of the most successful conservation programs ever. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service produces the federal duck stamp, which sells for $25 and raises approximately 40 million through sales each year. These funds support critical protection of wetland habitats and the National Wildlife Refuge System. The new areas provide additional access to the public to some of the most spectacular places anywhere for hunting, fishing, bird watching, hiking, and other outdoor activities. To be a part of this proud conservation legacy, all you need to do is purchase a federal duck stamp at a National Wildlife Refuge, sporting goods store, or other retailer, or even through the U.S. Postal Service or online with our partners at Amplex. The Federal Duck Stamp Contest that will commence shortly is the only juried art contest hosted by the U.S. government. And after seeing the impressive artwork that has been entered this year, it makes me, and hopefully all of you, appreciate the dedication these artists are willing to put into the chance to help raise funds through this unique program. Because that is what the Duck Stamp Program is all about. The art our hunting tradition, and conservation that all come together to make a lasting contribution for wildlife. I'm looking forward to judging and being among the first to see the winning design. Now let's get started. Thank you, Jerome, and thank you, Director Skipworth. We appreciate your words, and thank you um, to all of you who are out there listening. In a little bit, the judges will start the review of 138 pieces of art, and tomorrow we'll choose just one that will be the 2021-2022 stamp. The judges won't talk to each other and won't see how each other votes. I would now like to give you Larry Mellinger, who is a lawyer from the Direc Department of Interior's Office of Solicitors, to explain the rules and then we will proceed with the contest. Larry? Thank you, Suzanne. 
Well, in just a few minutes, we will begin judging in the 2020 Federal Duck Stamp Contest. Before that, in just a minute or two, we will introduce the species that were eligible for the art this year, and then we will introduce the judges and be underway. But first of all, we have to have the lawyer from across the river explain to everybody the rules. So we will begin this morning in just a few minutes with round one of the contest. All of the judges, all five of them, have had the opportunity to see all of the entries on display. They number from one to 140. As Suzanne just said, there's 138. Two were disqualified because they didn't follow the rules. But in any event, the order in which they will be presented to the judges is the order in which they were received in the duck stamp office. So we will begin with number one. During this round, each of the five judges will vote in or out. They'll be here in person voting, no mail-in ballots. We will immediately tabulate the votes and a majority of three votes, the, uh, the piece will go to the second round. So if it gets three, four, or five in votes, it will go to the next round. There is sort of a, a A and a B of round one. That's the A round in the second part of round one. After all the pieces have been judged and the ones receiving a majority of three or more votes go to the second round, each judge has the opportunity to go back among those that were not selected by a majority vote and select each individually up to five entries. They don't have to choose any additional entries, but each judge may select up to five. So tomorrow morning before we begin round two, we will announce anywhere from no additional entries to a possible 25 additional entries, and we will announce which, which number entries those are that were brought in uh, to round two by the judges. Tomorrow we will explain rounds two and three a little more in depth, but uh, just uh, briefly in round two, uh, the, the uh, pieces will continue to be judged numerically, but this time, they, instead of in or out, they will be numerically voted on by the judges using a scale of one to five, five being the best. And so we will have a score tallied for each piece of between five and 25. The, five ent or the uh, entries that receive the five highest scores, whatever those scores might be, will advance to the third and final round. So if the five highest scores happen to be 25, 24, 23, 22, and 21, any entry that has received one of those scores will advance to the third and final round. In the third round, we will continue of those entries that have made it to that round. They will be judged numerically, but this time with either a three, four, or five. So obviously, the composite score of the five judges will be somewhere between 15 and 25. And we'll be looking for a top score, a top single score that will be the winner of the 2020 Federal Duck Stamp Contest, and a second place and a third place. If there are any ties for first place, second place, or third place, or a three-way tie for first place, whatever, we will go to a tiebreaker, and we will explain that in a little more detail. But enough of the rules. We will right now show a short video to introduce you to the species that were eligible this year, and then we will introduce the judges, and then we will begin with the contest. Thank you very much.
wondering who the judges are. We have Paul Waite, who is a lifelong waterfowl hunter and conservationist. He began his education at University of Wisconsin Stevens Point as a wildlife management student before transferring to St. Cloud State University in Minnesota for a communications degree. Paul is the editor and publisher of Delta Waterfowl Magazine. He now has over 25 years of educational and professional experience as photographer and art editor. He has written several articles advocating the duck stamp program and celebrating its traditions and histories. He has been a judge of several state conservation stamp contests and is a stamp, staunch supporter of the junior duck stamp program. Welcome, Paul. Next, we have Mr. Scott Penninger. Scott received his art degree from Appalachian State University and also studied marine biology at the College of Charleston and under Jan Deas Po in the Caribbean. He has worked as a commercial fisherman, tour guide, and an exhibit designer for the North Carolina Aquarium. After two solo transatlantic crossings in a 34-foot sailboat, Scott returned to Charleston, South Carolina. His passion for the ocean and sea life can be seen in his sculptures, paintings, and bronze castings. Two of his bronzes are found in the Capitol building in Puerto Rico. Donnie Satchel is a native of Talbot County, Maryland. He has helped plan, design, and run the Easton Waterfowl Festival for over 25 years. He has been instrumental in providing opportunities for students and the community to learn and participate in the history and traditions of waterfowl hunting, to celebrate wildlife art, and to raise funds for waterfowl habitat conservation. Donnie served as a judge for the Maryland State Waterfowl Stamp Competition during the 20, 2012 National Junior Duck Stamp Contest and as the alternate judge for the Federal Duck Stamp Contest last year. Ms. Jane Lawson is the art and mer merchandising manager of Ducks Unlimited. She directs budgeting, marketing, inventory, and buying decisions for artwork sold through DU's annual banquets and sealed bid auctions. She secures artwork loans for the DU Waterfowling Heritage Center Museum and works closely with DU's National Art Committee members, wildlife artists, and art vendors. She has also directed DU's $2.5 million art, dollar art program. She has a Bachelor of Business Administration and Marketing with a minor in art from Mercer University of Macon, Georgia. Eric Mor Morris is a combat veteran, an outdoor writer, a speaker, and hunter education instructor. Mr. Morris hosts a nationally syndicated outdoor television show that promotes inclusion, hunting, and outdoor diversity. He has worked with members of the urban and youth communities to teach hunting, fishing, marksmanship, and outdoor survival skills, as well as provide information on access to affordable hunting and fishing locations across the nation. Mr. Morris has served as a judge for the 2020 National Junior Duck Stamp Contest and just got back from a hunting trip in Alaska. And last but not least, we have a very important alternate judge. Paul Reimer is known for his wildlife sculpture and taxidermy mounts in public and private collections throughout the US. His work, some of which can be seen in the annual Lee Yaki Woodson Art Museum's Birds in Nature, Birds in Art exhibition, and as part of the permanent displays of the National Zoo, the National Museum of Natural History, and the Hiram Blauvet Art Museum are inspired by his real world wildlife experiences. Mr. Reimer created the dioramas, models, and taxidermy in the National Postal Museum's Federal Duck Stamp exhibit. He serves as the board of directors for the Society of Animal Artists and the Ward Museum of Water Wildfowl Art. He's a longtime uh, Ducks Unlimited member and is an avid birder and waterfowl hunter. Larry, they're all yours. So let us begin the 2020 Federal Duck Stamp Contest with judging on entry number one.
Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. It's out. Number four. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. It's out. It's out. Please vote.
please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. It's out. Number 13 was disqualified. We'll proceed with number 14. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Thank you. Out. It's out. Number 46. Please vote.
please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
vote. Please vote. Please vote. vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
this vote. Please vote. Please vote. Out. At this time, we're going to give our judges about a 10 minute break. In 10 minutes, about uh, 11.38, 11.39 Eastern Time, we will continue and conclude round one, beginning with entry number 86. Thank you. Hello everyone, Scott Storm here. I was really looking forward to being in uh, Des Moines this year and seeing everyone. I uh, just wanted to say um, good luck to everybody in the contest this year. I'm really looking forward to seeing the winning piece of art. Uh, Till then, ciao. Hi, this is Holly Walter from Southern Colorado wishing all the artists in the Federal Duck Stamp Competition good luck. The Junior Duck Stamp raises funds to educate and engage our nation's youth in wildlife and wetland conservation and outdoor recreation. The winner of the 2020-2021 Junior Duck Stamp is Madison Grimm of South Dakota. Shawang Kim of New York took second place with a hooded merganser. Third place went to Mei Jia Tang of Maryland for her rendition of Northern Pintails. In addition to the art contest, there is also a junior duck stamp conservation message, encouraging students to express in words what they have learned from their research for the contest. This year's winner is Abby Gilrith of Nebraska with her message, when we practice conservation, we protect not only our wildlife, but our health and environment for future generations. 
Students in kindergarten through 12th grade participate in their annual state junior duck stamp program through their school, home, art studio, or after school group. After learning about wetlands, waterfowl, and wildlife conservation, they express their learning through a drawing or painting of waterfowl. The National Junior Duck Stamp Conservation and Design Program began in 1989 as an extension of the Migratory Bird Hunting and Conservation Stamp, commonly known as the Duck Stamp. The first National Junior Duck Stamp Art Contest was held in 1993. The stamp encourages students to explore their natural world, participate in outdoor recreation activities, and learn wildlife management principles. Approximately 2,000 junior duck stamps are sold annually for $5 each. This year, over 14,000 young artists submitted their entries to the junior duck stamp contest around the nation. Some artists from the federal duck stamp program started as junior artists. Buy your junior duck stamp today. In 1934, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Migratory Bird Hunting Stamp Act. An increasingly concerned nation took firm action to stop the destruction of wetlands vital to the survival of migratory waterfowl. Under the act, all waterfowl hunters 16 years of age and over must annually buy and carry a Migratory Bird Hunting and Conservation Stamp, better known today as a federal duck stamp. 98 cents of every duck stamp dollar goes directly into the Migratory Bird Conservation Fund to purchase or lease wetlands and wildlife habitat for inclusion in the National Wildlife Refuge System. This ensures there will be land for wildlife and humans that will be protected for generations to come. Since 1934, some $800 million has gone into that fund to protect more than 5.7 million acres of habitat. Little wonder the federal duck stamp program has been called one of the most successful conservation programs ever initiated. One of the reasons for the duck stamp success is that anyone can buy the stamp, which can also be used as an annual pass to National Wildlife Refuges charging entrance fees. The Migratory Bird Conservation Fund has contributed to over 253 wildlife refuges. Maybe you've been to one of the following, Wapanaka, Sacramento River, Monta Vista, Stuart B. McKinney, Bombay Hook, Jay and Ding Darling, Okie Finoki, Bear Lake, Crab Orchard, Muscatatuck, DeSoto, Quivera, Real Foot, Bayou Sauvage, Moosehorn, Blackwater, Patuxent, Silvio Conti, Detroit River, Rice Lake, Tallahatchie, Swan Lake, Red Rock Lakes, Crescent Lake, Desert, Paranagant, Great Swamp, Bitter Lake, Montezuma, Great Dismal Swamp, Long Lake, Ottawa, Deep Fork, Heart Mountain, Erie, Savannah, Dakota Grassland, Chickasaw, Aransas, Santa Ana, Fish Springs, Chincoteague, Columbia, Canaan Valley, Nasida, or Cokeville Meadows. The next time you visit one of the many National Wildlife Refuges, don't forget to bring your current duck stamp to show your support for wetland and wildlife conservation.
everyone, Scott Storm here. I was really looking forward to being in uh, Des Moines this year and seeing everyone. I uh, just wanted to say um, good luck to everybody in the contest this year. I'm really looking forward to seeing the winning piece of art. Uh, till then, ciao. The Junior Duck Stamp raises funds to educate and engage our nation's youth in wildlife and wetland conservation and outdoor recreation. The winner of the 2020-2021 Junior Duck Stamp is Madison Grimm of South Dakota. Shawang Kim of New York took second place with a hooded merganser. Third place went to Mei Jia Tang of Maryland for her rendition of Northern Pintails. In addition to the art contest, there is also a junior duck stamp conservation message, encouraging students to express in words what they have learned from their research for the contest. This year's winner is Abby Gilrith of Nebraska with her message, when we practice conservation, we protect not only our wildlife, but our health and environment for future generations. Students in kindergarten through 12th grade participate in their annual state junior duck stamp program through their school, home, art studio, or after school group. After learning about wetlands, waterfowl, and wildlife conservation, they express their learning through a drawing or painting of waterfowl. The National Junior Duck Stamp Conservation and Design Program began in 1989 as an extension of the Migratory Bird Hunting and Conservation Stamp, commonly known as the Duck Stamp. The first National Junior Duck Stamp Art Contest was held in 1993. The stamp encourages students to explore their natural world, participate in outdoor recreation activities, and learn wildlife management principles. Approximately 2,000 junior duck stamps are sold annually for $5 each. This year, over 14,000 young artists submitted their entries to the junior duck stamp contest around the nation. Some artists from the federal duck stamp program started as junior artists. Buy your junior duck stamp today.
number 86. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
Please vote. vote. Please vote. Please vote.
Chinese boat. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
the vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote.
Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Out. And that concludes the voting in round one of the 2020 Federal Duck Stamp Contest. As explained at the beginning of the contest, the judges will now have the opportunity for each one of them to go back and select up to five entries that did not get voted into the round by majority vote. So they can choose anywhere from zero to five additional entries, each judge. So tomorrow morning before round two begins, we'll announce the entry numbers between one and 25, or maybe zero, and 25 additional entries that have advanced to round two by motion of a single judge. We will begin with round two and go to round three and finish up this contest beginning at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow morning. Hope to see you then. Thank you.